Hello and welcome to Code Sketched. In our previous videos, we got to learn what exactly rendering means in React. We also saw what are the factors that make a React component to re-render. In both those videos, we kept referencing to a magical ability of the React library that allowed it to surgically update the DOM in the most optimal way. That concept is known as reconciliation. And in today's video, we'll look into just that. Let's get started. Before getting into reconciliation, let us do some groundwork. At the core of all this, there is an important term and that is declarative. You must have heard a thousand times about how React provides us with a declarative way to define our user interface. What that means is, unlike jQuery, where you manually traverse to the DOM element and make the modifications yourself, in React, you just specify how your UI must look like based on some params. The params can be as basic as the state and the props. And this is what we do. We specify a React component that returns a piece of JSX or the user interface, which is dependent on the state and the props. Notice how we do not change the UX when the state or props do. We take care of updating the state and React takes care of updating the UI to then faithfully represent that state on the browser. With that understanding, you might assume that whenever you change some state in a component, just because we see that the component gets re-rendered, React would tear down the entire DOM tree and build it up from scratch, right? Wrong. Interfacing with the DOM and making changes to it is a costly affair and React will do everything within its powers to make as little DOM modifications as possible. And this is where the reconciliation algorithm comes into the picture. It is a set of rules that allows React to take a call as to which part of the DOM tree in the browser get to stay untouched, which parts need to be broken down and built from scratch, as well as some parts that need a little tweaking so that they are good to go. It's basically a diffing algorithm that takes two pieces, compares them and takes decision based on the differences. But what are the two pieces? We know for sure that one piece is the actual browser DOM, but what about the other? Well, that is where the virtual DOM comes into the picture. According to the official React docs, it is a programming concept where a virtual representation of the UI is kept in memory and synced with the real DOM. The components get re-rendered, the virtual DOM gets generated based on the latest state and props. It is then reconciled with the actual DOM and the required parts are updated. It wasn't that difficult, was it? With that understanding, let us now get into the actual rules of reconciliation or the diffing algorithm that React applies to decide whether a component is going to get updated on the real DOM. The first rule is that while comparing the two trees, whenever we see that the two elements have different types, React will tear down the entire tree below it and build one up from scratch. For instance, whenever we are diffing between these two component trees, we would see that a div element got changed to a span element between re-renders, maybe due to a conditional rendering of some sort. In that case, the counter component will get unmounted, its state destroyed and then remounted onto the DOM. The next rule is that whenever two DOM elements of the same type are encountered, React will keep the same underlying DOM and only update the attributes that changed. For example, when React compares these two elements, it will just modify the class name or the CSS class on the underlying DOM node. Instead of changing the class, even if we had changed the inline style, React would only update the style that got changed on the DOM node, like color in this case, and leave the font weight unchanged. The next rule deals with React components of the same type. When comparing between two same components among the two trees, React will keep the same component instance and just update the props passed to it. As a result of that, when the render method is called on that component, some new JSX tree could get created. The diff algorithm then recurses on the result of the render method, comparing it with the previous result. The next rule is where it gets interesting. It deals with the scenario of recursing over the children of a DOM node. By default, React just iterates over the present list of children, compares each of them to the previous list and generates a mutation whenever there's a difference like inserting the third ally element in this case. But if this item was inserted at the start instead of the end, React would have thought that this is a brand new list and created all the three items from scratch. That would be fairly inefficient in case of large lists. And that is where the key attribute comes into the picture. While rendering children like in the previous case, we can pass a unique key attribute to each child element. When we do that, React can then compare between the two lists and get to know that the element with the key 2014 is new and the other elements with the keys 2015 and 2016 have just been reshuffled. So now you know why React keeps complaining about the key prop in your console when you don't supply one. React is actually asking for your help. Anyways, those were the few important rules to understand when it comes to reconciliation. Now that you know about them, you understand your craft better and have little more bragging rights in front of your colleagues. Links to all the references are in the description box. 
That's it for today's video. Here's another one that explains the event loop in JavaScript if you're interested.